Okay, this is the Artist Network, uh, the United Artist Network, and uh, my name's Chuck Fouts. I'm talking about Maximum Exposure on June 2nd, and I'm probably going to go over maybe a little bit of history of the previous shows and kind of what led me to all the, the artistry behind the show and, you know, the inspiration. And definitely I'm going to be interviewing the people who definitely have helped me and who help encourage me to create these shows. So I'm going to start off with Justin. His name is Justin Holmes. He's a cinematographer. Yep. He owns a 35 millimeter, uh, is it video? Multimedia. Multimedia. 35 yep, yep. millimeter multimedia. Productions. Productions. Yep, yep. Okay. So, uh, Justin, I, I noticed that when I looked, when I started working with you, I noticed we had a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. One thing I did learn about you is that you got your start at the exact same age I was, 14 mm. years old. Yep, interesting. 14 years old. Uh, what was it like? becoming, basically becoming that type, be, taken on that type of responsibility at such a young age? Okay, so um, luckily I was able to work a job first, right? So my first job was at, uh, was at Kodak. So uh, my mom got me my first camera at 14, started shooting my friends' music videos and stuff, dance videos. And then um, my sister got me a job at Kodak, started working there, had a chance to work with people, really wasn't as much of a big deal. You messed up some one picture because you've taken so many people pictures. So um, it provided me just the opportunity to like uh, learn how to talk to people. I was the top sales guy. I was promoted right off back to the supervisor and everything. Um, so, you know, just uh, just naturally gifted with the ability to talk to people. So, awesome. yeah, yep, yep, yep. As far as you, what made you, how, how did you, what was that thing that made you say I wanted to do this? Create creativity, I, uh, creative structure. Actually, my parents were getting a divorce. Okay. And of course, when your parents get a divorce, the foundation is knocked out from underneath of you. Mm. So my dad went out and bought me a camera, mm. and then we took a vacation. And uh, when I got back from that vacation, I had taken pictures of the vacation. The pictures turned out gorgeous. Mm. After that, I started just taking pictures on random I would take pictures at school like mm -hmm. I would I would take pictures at my high school mm -hmm. and before I knew it I was being booked at every single party that our high school had to offer mm -hmm. at the time I thought that was the greatest thing in the world mm -hmm. and then later on that was kind of like an education as to what my life was going to be like later on because when I look at that now that was actually a preview of what I was going to be doing later on mm -hmm. but uh, I started getting more into visuals I started getting more into graphic design mm -hmm. I started getting more I just took what I had, I took, photography has always been the heart of my work, mm -hmm. but I took that and I just enhanced it and enhanced it, enhanced it, created my own website, hosted, hosted these photos and videos and all these different visuals on this website. Next thing I know, I had a following of 28 million viewers per day. Wow. And that I, that I hosted that website for six years. Mm -hmm. The website company went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. I lost everything, everything. I uh, contacted a lawyer to, to get that, all that stuff back. Uh, after about a year, I never heard any more about it. Mm. Um, and then probably um, about two, I, I went on and created probably about eight more visual projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably about two years into creating those visual projects, I became, I created my own photography studio. Mm -hmm. I actually was volunteering my time at a, uh, an event. I had gotten inducted into the International Honor Society at my okay. college. I actually went to school for IT. Mm -hmm. And um, I, uh, this, I volunteered my time at this event, and uh, the photographer, I photographed, I t took photos for him. He hired me right on the spot, and mm. I worked for him for about 10 months, mm. and then I created my own studio. The first event I did for him was the Emmys. Mm. Nice. So, but from the very first booking, I started receiving bookings right away. At the moment I did that event, I mean, it was just a chain reaction all the way five years, five and a half years now, 400 Most something definitely. events. That's powerful. One of the uh, more fascinating things I remember when uh, we first came to communication, the mm -hmm. amount of events you said you have done, what you showed me, because you sent me, uh, sent me the link and I'm going through, I'm like, <laughs> uh, yeah. how many events have you done? Uh, over f at least 400. Yeah. At least 400. I, I stopped counting after 300. And for you, real. Got the, you got the evidence because when you sent it to me, I'm like, wow. This isn't is a that lot important people. to have the goods to back you up when you see it's, it's perfectly sure. normal for somebody to go out there and say, hey, I've done this, but mm -hmm. do, where's the proof? So I, sure. at least I always have something to present. Yeah. What about you? Uh, what, what motivates you? What drives you? Um, what motivates me? Um, I want to be able to one day empower people, right? So I, I know uh, 
a lot of times with the projects I've been a part of as far as St. Louis wise, anything, uh, when it comes to like films or just whatever, a lot of people don't have like large budgets to take care of all the people they want involved. So mm -hmm. I want to be one of those people to, you know, be able to take care of people for something that, you know, that they love to do because everybody like to, you know, kind of act and, you know, do something, be a part of something. And I want to have like budgets to where everyone can be taken care of and they yeah. can, you know, because I've I'm, been on plenty of sets where we're standing out there all day for free. So same here. Yeah, yeah. Same here. And I didn't mind a lot of the people that I do did, did volunteer my time for. They were wonderful people in my life who yeah. I didn't mind. It's you don't even think about that. You lose you lose that because that that's they, these people are in my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, these people have really like Pierre. There's people out there who are there for me. Uh, a couple of the models that are going to be that I'm going to be interviewing later, I, they've been there for me, and I've been there for them. It's we just don't even think about those things. Right, most it's definitely. Just, it's very very important just to be there for one another because I tell you what, money is a really you know ha having to pay you know pay, some of the stuff that we do it's very expensive. Right. You know, have, having a good photographer is very expensive. Having a good videographer is very expensive. But mm -hmm. hey, we live in a different time now. You mm -hmm. know, we have to be a little bit more realistic. For sure. So, and that's the way. Instead of you know going and say, charging five hundred to seven hundred dollars for an event or something like that, I'm more. I'm a little bit more realistic. Let's talk maybe a couple hundred, maybe right. a hundred, maybe two hundred, maybe three hundred. Right. For sure. Things like that. Yeah, and how did you come up with the name uh, Maximum Exposure? Well, it started out as the Massive Project, okay, and then it turned into Maximum Exposure because there was a time in my life when I was really when things were just so crazy, just like I was doing. I had covered like a long range, a long series of hot events, okay, and I just I was feeling overexposed. It just felt like every single people were hanging on to my every word, every single post, every single thing. People were walking up to me. I didn't even know them. People were getting offended because I didn't remember who they were. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you photograph 400 events and there's millions of people involved, you're not going to remember everybody. For sure, I you have know, no problem all the time. <laughs> I just felt overexposed, so that's why I called it Maximum Exposure because okay. this, the project was an inspirational project. Okay, and the more and more I tried to make the projects. Uh, I always had these ideas and I had these really creative ideas on what I really wanted to do. The more every time I tried to do that, it became more into my life story. For sure. So the, I need to stop thinking, I need to stop trying to make it into this whole entire vision mm -hmm. and start making it more into my life story. But and that's the way it happened both times. And that's right. the way this 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 project too, it's the same way. It's mm -hmm. becoming my story. It's literally a cut off of my photography career. It's basically mm -hmm. I'm taking my photography events and turning them into a series. Mm, most definitely. And you know, uh, one thing I've uh, learned about like doing productions and stuff, they say it's, uh, it's always three changes. You got um, when you write it down, the idea, when you shoot it, and then when you produce it. So yeah. it changes three times. So mm -hmm. how do you, you know, with, you know, thinking about that, how do you see the maximum exposure unfolding from your original idea to what it is now. I tell you what, after this this being my third project, I just embrace. Mm. So it, the way that it comes out, and I, le I learned that with you in the second one, mm -hmm. to stop worrying about that stuff. This is the way it's supposed to be. I believe that this path was pre-written pre for me, mm -hmm. and because it always seemed to work out. My projects are blessed in mm -hmm. some way, but I think it's because I'm helping a lot of people, right. and I got into it for good intentions. I'm not a greedy person. Right. Greedy, greed is a sin, and that's why people are punished for it. Mm -hmm. So that's I just let it happen. Mm -hmm. I learned to just let it happen. I stopped thinking about all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is just getting everybody there. But as far as like the idea that I wrote down and then w the way it actually happened, it usually comes out better than that. So I mm -hmm. have, that's why I just learned to embrace because most I'm definitely. surrounded by a bunch of creative people who really do know what they're doing. For sure. And I kind of like, you know, it's like, I like the way you are, it feels like you go off of vibes mm -hmm. more than anything else. You take in the energy around you mm -hmm. and you create mm -hmm. just like what I do. So when you send me those videos, I'm looking at it and I was like, I like seeing other people's points of view. That's why we have multiple photographers. And like, I like seeing it from different points of view. I, I have my view, but the way you guys view it, it's 10 times better than the way I view it for real because mm. I created it. Wow. So I have my, it's, it, that's like the raw format. You guys are just the, you guys, those are the different visions. I'm like, when I look at that, I'm like, oh my gosh, I created that. Mm. Like the first show I did when the pictures came, I mean, I'm sitting there running around like a chicken with my head cut off, trying to make sure everything is taken care of. And then when the pictures and the videos come out, I'm like, oh my God. I was <laughs> like, I created this? <laughs> Most definitely. So that, and that really helped me in such a way too, because whenever I got sent the pictures for my event, 
I remember, now I know how it feels to be on the other side of the fence because whenever I send people the pictures of the event, they just look at it and some of them, I'm sure they become emotional because they put all of that energy into that event and this is all they got left. Mm. It just becomes a memory. Um, it's what, uh, closing out this interview, um, what, if you had one word to describe you, what would be that word? Mm. Justin Holmes is. Uh, that's a good question, right? What would be one word? Uh, persistent. Persistent. Yep, yep. Very good. I messed up a lot of stuff, but I, you know, I've, uh, I'm pretty much going into who I know I will be. You know what I mean? Like as far as being uh, the most influential person uh, out of the St. Louis area when it comes to photography, videography. So I know um, at the beginning, you know, I had to learn a lot. And then now I really kind of see my work really coming into like full throttle from, you know, learning like going YouTube University tutorial after tutorial after tutorial of learning lighting, audio, uh, video, editing, you know, just thousands of hours just dedicated. But I'm here. Justin, thank you. Appreciate it, Chuck. The Artist United Network is filmed on location at Streetscape Studios.